In this video, I will give you a short demonstration on complex numbers in MATLAB. We'll start off by obtaining a new live script. And let's just start off with basics. So I'll define a variable A and I'll assign it the value of the complex unit. And so in MATLAB, you can just use I. See the tab completion even says it. I can just imaginary unit. And if I run that, it shows us the complex number, zero for the real part, and then one for the imaginary part. Another way to do this is one i. And notice I don't need a multiplication sign between the one and the i. I can change this to three i, and you'll see it just works like that. I can put in the multiplication sign, of course, and I'll use the alternate symbol j, because j also is the imaginary unit. And then I can form a complex number. And there it is. I could also do this with matrices. So here you'll see two random matrices. If I run this again, the matrices will change. They're both three by four matrices. And then let's form a complex matrix. And you'll see A and B are both 3 by 4. And now C is a 3 by 4 complex matrix because each element has the real and the imaginary part. OK, now let's look at some built-in functions. First is the real function. This returns the real part of an imaginary number, so let's use the C scalar. And if you look up here at C, there's zero for the real part, so the answer is zero. Let's instead use D, and now it says four is the real part. Like real, we can also find the imaginary part and it has found uh, negative 5 to be the imaginary part. We can find the angle of D, and it's going to return the angle, but this is in radians. So I'll do that again, but this time I'll convert it to degrees. And if I like, I'll put in here that. Now, there's the argument. Let's now also find the modulus. And to do this, we use the abs function. And it didn't like it because I changed a variable and I forgot to use an assignment operator. Now it's happy. We could also do these same functions with a matrix. And if I run these, I get two real matrices that contain the angle information and the magnitude information. Uh, finally, it may be useful to make some of your own user-defined functions. <coughs> now, when writing a user-defined function in a live script, you have to put them at the end of the live script or you could put it in a separate .m file. I'm going to put them all here. So actually, there will only be one example. And this example will be one where we input a complex number and return its polar form. <coughs> so to do this, I will use both the num2string function and the disp function. This function will have no outputs other than the text on the screen. So we use the disp function to put text on the screen. And then I'll use the num2string function for z. And we'll just show you how that goes for now. So I can uh, add here 
a, another line. And let's use the D variable. And this line here, polar form D, has outputted it like this. And that's what num2string does. It makes z into a string and then disp displays the string. Now I want to add to it, so uh, I'll put in here the brackets and then an equal sign. So we're concatenating the string, adding more onto it. 4 minus 5i equals. So there's the equal sign. And then let's add a parentheses. And we'll put in the polar form. So we need the modulus. So we need the modulus. Abs z. So let's put in here num2 string. This should work better. And there's that. And okay. And then we'll put in a comma and then the angle. But in polar form, we want not a radian angle, but a degree angle. And we'll close our parentheses group. Double click to make sure that gets evaluated. Uh, and so then I have this magnitude angle. And if I want to format this, I can put in a format string in the num2 string function. So let's say maybe I want seven places overall, but only uh, two decimal places, and then f for a floating point number. And then I'm going to do the same thing here in the other num2 string invocation. And then when I run this, you'll see it's only showing two decimal places, so it's cleaner. One other thing I might want to do here is make sure that it's clear that these are degrees, so I'll put that in there. And then we're showing degrees. Okay, again, this function doesn't return any output. It just puts textual output in the MATLAB results. Since this is a live script, it's showing up in the right. Uh, otherwise, it would show up in the command line if this weren't a live script. All right, well, I hope that was a helpful introduction to complex numbers in MATLAB for you. Please subscribe and like the video. Thanks. Have a great day.